Hi everyone, this is Audrey from TechWritingMatters.com. This is part three of a four-part tutorial on how to document your project using Sphinx. So in this video, we are going to get straight into the meat of the tutorial, which is writing in restructured text. So I'll go over some basic formatting options and direct you to where you can find more information. We're going to begin by creating a new file right away in the source folder. So I'm going to move to source. And to create a new file, you can just use the same Vim command. And I want to name my file uh, before you begin. It's going to be a .rst file. So this is how you open and create new files with Vim. Great, so that's a brand new file. I can press I to begin editing. You can continue editing from here. I'm going to switch text editors. I can see the new file here. Great, so I'm going to keep going and adding text and I'll come back and show you how to start formatting. Okay, so I've inserted my text and the only additional thing I have to do is an image at the bottom. But first I want to talk about headings or titles. So this is going to be the main title of my page and these are going to be the subheadings here. Restructured text uses certain markers in order to identify the hierarchy of titles. So for example, I'm going to use the equal sign below the title. And this identifies a section. When you have a title, anything below that is a section until restructured text finds the next title. So this is a subtitle. I'm going to use a different marker here, in this case, the hyphen. Now it doesn't matter what you actually use. Um, again, I'll, I'll post a link in the description box that shows you the different types of markers this language recognizes. But the important thing is to just remain consistent. If I'm using the equal sign as my main heading, I need to do that for all the pages in my documentation. And if the hyphen represents a subheading, the next level down, that needs to be consistent throughout. So consistency is the only thing that matters here. So I could change this to a plus sign. Uh, I won't do that now. But like I say, it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you're consistent. And we look at how this shows up in when we run the build. If you still wanted to have further subheadings, you could go ahead and use different markers for those. If you want to make something bold, it's just a matter of putting two asterisks before and after the word, and that makes it bold. Italics is just one asterisk before and after the word. That changes it to italics. And bullet points are, if I wanted to change this to bullet points, I would just put in a star. and this would show up as bullet points in HTML. Let's look at how to insert an image next. So if we look in uh, the file explorer, I created a new folder called images because I intend to use lots of images. So just to keep things organized, I've created a new folder here. And this is the image I'd like to pull in right at the bottom of the screen. I'm just gonna copy the name of this image. And this is how you do it in restructured text. So I'm gonna put a space. Spacing is really important in this language. And this is the format. Figure. Now I used figure because I want a caption for this image. If you did not want a caption, you could have just used image here. And this is called a directive. And now I have to specify where the image is located. So as you can see, relative to the before you begin file, which is the file I'm currently in, uh, it's in a folder called images. So that's what I'm going to specify here. Images and then the name of the file. To enter a caption, you'd have to put in an additional space and then space three times so that you're aligned directly below the F. And this is where you can type in your image, figure one, or, and I want this in italics, so I'm just gonna put a star before and after. So this will insert my image with the caption, but I actually want to add a few more properties to this so I can configure the image how I want. And to do that, to add a property, to a directive, the directive being figure. Again, three spaces, so you're below the letter F. And here you can add an alt text, which is always a good idea for a figure. You could scale down the image if it's too large, so maybe down to 40% of its size. And there's other options as well, which you can look up in the link I've provided in the description box. But that's basically how you enter an image. Again, if you didn't want a caption, you just change figure to image. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a little more formatting here and I'll come back when done. Okay, I've made all the changes. I just added a few more bold words. I'm going to save my work 
And now if you want to see how this looks in HTML, you first have to add it to the talk tree in your index file. So let's go there. And the file I want to add is before you begin. So I'll go to the talk tree. And again, I'll make sure I'm aligned directly below the T and type in the name of the file. The other thing I want to do from here is I want to link to this page from the index page. So I had a line here, install Joomla first. And I want the reader to be able to click on this link that will direct them to my new file here. So the way you insert a hyperlink is you first have to set a target. So this is my target, this new file here. So to set a target for the whole page, and you can give this any name you want as long as it's unique throughout your documentation. Let's call it setting up and a colon. Now if I go back into my index page, so this is the phrase I want to install the hi if I want to put the hyperlink. So the way you do that is colon ref colon, oops, and then a back quote. Go to the end of the phrase that you want hyperlinked and then use the unique uh, target name that you set up. Close with a back quote. So there's two steps involved. The first is to create a hyperlink target and this can be for an entire page or for a section within a page. So I can set up uh, a hyperlink target just above this section here as well if I wanted to link to this section. And then the second step is to actually create the hyperlink using the ref directive. Okay, so we've connected our new file to the talk tree and we've made all our formatting changes. So now let's run a build and see how this looks. I'm gonna save both the files and go to the command line. I need to move to docs. Make HTML. Great, no errors. Okay, so we can see the new file that we created up here, if I go to it, there's our image that we added that looks good. So there's our main heading with the subheadings. And this is where the hierarchy comes into play. You can see how the table of contents is set up with whatever you specified as your subheading. If you had a further set of headings below this hierarchy, it wouldn't show up here just yet because if we go back into index, you can see the talk tree has a max depth of two. And what two means is it's just going to show one set of nested headings. If you change this to three and you had further subheadings, that would show up in the table of contents as well. I actually prefer not having a label up here as well. So I'm going to remove the captions. So let's create another file and I'll show you some more formatting options there. My new file is going to be called creating. Okay, so I've added my content. As you can see, I followed the same structure for the headings and subheadings. And I want these bullet points to be able to link to different sections of the page. So for example, I can set a hyperlink target right here. Let's call this open. And you need to put a space in between. And now I can link this to that section. So let's see how that looks so far. I'll save my work. Make HTML. Oh, so I got a warning that the new file I created wasn't included in the talk tree and I did forget to do that. So let's do that and run a build again. Okay, so I can add the file here or I can create a separate talk tree because I want it to be grouped differently. So I'm not sure what the limit is as to how many talk trees you can create. I'll find out. But I'll do the same max depth. And this time I wanted caption for beginners. And this is where I'll put in the name of the file. So great, that's a separate talk tree for my new file. Hopefully no errors, that's great. Let's go back into Chrome and refresh. And you can see how it shows up here with the new talk tree that I created. So you can create many groups by creating more talk trees. Let's go back into our file and make some more changes. So let's embed a YouTube video right about here. So from the margin, I'm going to type in raw HTML, three spaces. And here I have to paste a code. And I get the code from YouTube. 
So this is the video that I want to embed and to get the iframe tag that I'm the code that I'm looking for you go to share and then click embed and you have to copy this code in. So this is where I'm going to paste that code. So great let's save this and see how that looks. I refresh this and we can see the YouTube video embedded here. Now let's look at how to insert an inline image. I want to put in an image of this new button right about here. So the way you do that is you put in this vertical line, actually two vertical lines, and in between you give it a unique name. So I'll just say new button. And down here you have to specify what this is. So, and the location of the image. So it's in my images folder. Now I'm using the image directive because I don't want a caption for this. And I want to scale it down a little. So, so let's see how that looks. Make HTML. Refresh. And I can see the image now inserted. The last thing we're going to look at is how to insert a note box. Now this can be any type. Restructured text uh, has several types. Caution, warning, tip and so on. I want to insert something right about here and right about here is let's see what a warning looks like. So warning is the directive. Three spaces and then you type in your warning. So if I just did that and refreshed that's what it looks like. This is not actually what I want to do. You can create boxes that have customized titles, so you can name it whatever you want. And the way you do that is instead of warning, you type in admonition, and then you can type in whatever title you want. So if I want to name mine remember and put in my text here, let's see how this looks. I'll save my file. So there, that's how you put in a note box with your own customized title. So as I said, with restructured text supports different types of boxes. Uh, I'll have a link in the description box where you can play around with this. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to clean up the formatting a bit, add more images, and I'm also going to start adding more files and complete my documentation. I'm going to have another section for advanced users, which I can create by, by adding another talk tree and captioning that advanced and I'll add my files for the advanced users there. In the next video we're going to push our docs onto GitHub, open a Read the Docs account and host our documentation there. See you there!